and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for part five of our Throne of Eldraine Brewers set review. Oh, hey, Hawkeye. Um, we got green. We got the last color. After this, we're going to have multicolor artifacts and lands all put together. Um, but this is where we go through all 269 cards in Throne of Eldraine and give some in-depth analysis talking about each card, talking about how they can be used in standard and how it could have an impact on the format as well. And so, yeah, we're going through every single card. We're giving them a letter grade as well, A, B, C, or D, depending on how much play I think that they'll see in the format, or just giving it an L for the limited rating if it's a card that really shouldn't see any standard play. Um, so far, we've gone through... Uh, white, blue, black, red, and gr or, and red, sorry. We've gone through those four colors. So if you're watching this later on YouTube, hope you check out those videos as well. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, you can go down below to the uh, description, video description, and you can see a link to the spreadsheet that has um, all, like, all the grades on there with all the different colors and the grading scale and everything like that. So you can check that, as, that out as well. But for the discussion, we got myself, we have Hawkeye, we have Twitch chat over here um, bringing you each card. So we are on Beanstalk Giant now, card 194. Close. Card 149 out of 269 here. All right. So uh, Beanstalk Giant is six and a green. Hawkeye, now I can't see the card anymore. For a giant with star star, its power and toughness are each equal to the number of lands you control. But it also has fertile footsteps, two and a green for a sorcery. That's the adventure you can send to the beanstalk giant on first, where you search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. So rampant growth costs three mana. Isn't isn't spectacular there. Um, but then for spending three mana on rampant growth, you get a seven mana um, huge creature that's, uh, you know, power toughness each equal to the number of lands you control. It doesn't have evasion or anything like that. Um, oh, and I guess, okay, yeah, so the basic land card comes into play untapped. So that's kind of cool. So it's like, um, what's the one that, that does that, like, normally here uh, that, from, that was from Dominaria? There was three mana... Uh, it had kicker. I don't remember the name of it. Grow from the ashes. That's right. It had kicker. Um, like I think grow from the ashes is going to be a, is a better card than the beanstalk giant. I think uh, having the kicker to be able to get the two lands out is probably going to be more valuable than uh, at seven mana playing a large creature. I could be wrong there, um, but it's at at least it's very very comparable in power level. Um, Girl from the Ashes, we saw, uh, basically saw, ze you know, very, very little play. Um, I kind of expect the same thing from this card. Very, very little play. Um, it does have, like, the ability to, like, if you draw it in the late game, where, like, drawing Girl from the Ashes in the late game doesn't really help you draw this thing. You just play a big creature and hope that creature does something. Um, so I, I have Bling Stock Bing Time, Fling Time. So yeah, I'm not in love with the card, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and give this a, a D. Uh, D is a card that you'll rarely see in standard, but can fill a role uh, in a fringe deck. And so that's what I'm kind of feeling here for this Beanstalk Giant. Not in love with it, but it's not a card that's completely unplayable. It's not an, it's not an L. Curious Pair, 1G for a 1-3. That's not very useful. But you get treats to share. You get this adventure, green mana, create a food token. I highly doubt that a ability that Oko has as a plus ability is worth an entire card to kind of have. You know, three mana for a, a one three that creates a food token. Just nah. I'm going with an L here for curious pair. L. Um, I said D for Beanstalk Giant. Uh, Edgewall Innkeeper is one green for a 1-1. One, one. Whenever you cast a creature spell that has adventure, draw a card. I mean, you can't really over... Like, 
drawing a card is very valuable. Like we know how, how valuable cards are. Like that's that's really valuable. So it's it's hard to overlook this card. Um, it could be like now you're gonna start throwing like curious pair in your deck because you want to draw cards off innkeeper. I don't think that's a great way to build a deck. Um, but you know, like there are there are a lot of green creatures with adventure. I I think this is you know, like this is a a uh, pretty janky build around thing. Um, I don't, I don't think Selesnia Adventures is really a deck. Like, I don't think there's good enough adventures. Like, I could be wrong here, but I, I don't think that there's going to be an adventure deck. Um, but if there is an adventure deck, this is what you want to play. You know, like, it's just one mana, so it has just a really cheap investment. You're not really doing anything in combat with this card. It's a one-one, so it's just going to sit there. Whenever after you play this card and you get you then you play your first adventure, you're talking about playing Fibblethip. You have your one mana one or you have your one one that drew a card. It's it's one mana, but so you have to play this and then play an adventure creature and then you have Fibblethip. So then you have to play another adventure creature to really make this card kind of better than Fibblethip. So I don't love it, but it's not the worst. Um, I'm thinking this is kind of like it's maybe a D plus. We'll go with a D plus. the The fact that like we're not gonna get other adventures from other sets um, is not good for the long term aspects of Edgewall Innkeeper. But right now, whenever we have standard at the smallest, it's gonna be with five sets and the most uh, adventure cards we're gonna have. Maybe, maybe you can put this in some decks. But yeah, it's some jank. All right, we got Feasting Troll King. Two GG GG for a 7-6 Vigilant Trample. So that's six mana total for a 7-6 Vigilant Trample. When it enters the battlefield, if you cast it from your hand, create three food tokens and sacrifice three foods to return Feasting King, Troll King from your graveyard to the battlefield. Activated only during your turn. So it does enter... If you do that ability, it enters in untapped. So that's something there. So this is six mana, seven, six trample. You know, we're talking Carnage Tyrant there. Um, obviously, this can be countered. This has Vigilance. Um, if it does enter, you get to make three foods. And then uh, can you play this in a in a reanimate deck? And you, you know, reanimate by sacrificing three foods. If so, you got to be playing foods. Um I don't know. Like it this is a this is a hard card to judge. This is a hard card to judge. You you personally think it's a lot better than a C? We're talking we we still are talking about a six mana card here. You know, six mana cards, you're talking about Hydroid Crisis drawing two cards. You're talking about uh more expensive than Cavalier Thorns. You know, like six mana cards we're talking about like Garuk that we're going to talk about later. I, I think it's Garrick. I'm not sure if it's exactly there. Uh, but you're talking about, you know, you can play Garrick. You can play Ugin. Like, do you want to play this over Ugin? I mean, you really have to have that third thing be worth a lot. Um, like, this this part has to be pretty easy to turn on. You know, like, returning this back, that's got to be pretty easy to turn on. So, th really, the question is, is how easy is that going to be to turn on? kind of thing so, so that's why it's kind of hard to um it's hard to judge this card yeah it if it enters if if you get to cast it once from your hand then and get the three food tokens then of course that is very easy to bring back so yeah like that so then you can get it back another time this one's tough yeah, if you have your rock and play, you make six foods. Um, this is a tough card to, to, like, I think this is kind of like, like basically, okay, we have Voracious Hydra at B. Is this going to see as much play as Voracious Hydra? I don't think so. We have, like, Gargos at C. Is this better than Gargos? Yeah, probably. So I think I'm, I'm somewhere in there. Is it closer to Voracious Hydra or Gargos? I don't know. That's that's where I'm not sure. I don't know. Yeah, I think this is a B minus C plus. 
Um, it can go in a lot in different decks. It can. I mean, you're even if you're not a food deck, your plan is just to play it and then get it back. But the thing is, is like, if you're a six mana deck, do you have better things to be doing? If you're not a food deck, do you have better things to be doing? I'm gonna go C plus. I'm skeptical here. Fell the Pheasant. One in a G for an instant. Deals five damage to target creature with flying. Create a food token. Five damage is a really nice number. You get rid of Kefnet. You get rid of Cavalier of Gales. You get rid of Crackling Drake. Uh, good good number to have there. Uh, two mana instant speed removal for a flyer is good. It doesn't doesn't really do a good job of keeping Arclight Phoenix down because you know Arclight Phoenix just goes to the graveyard comes back, kind of thing there. Um, Plummet is still around, yes. So this is Plummet, but you get a food token. But it's basically Plummet, like it kills everything, basically. Like Niv Mizzet, Reborn, it doesn't get rid of, but it gets rid of basically everything else oh, i guess i guess hydroid crisis like so crisis yeah it can usually get rid of crisis but i guess crisis can be a lot bigger and then you'd rather have plummet okay so i guess crisis is a really big and uh doom whisper it's not killing doom whisper all right we're going now i'm not playing this card fierce witch stalker four mana four four trample wolf enters the battlefield create a food token so we do want more wolves for wolf tribal uh, for Nightpack Ambusher, Tulsimer, having more wolves are good. However, all these wolves are costing four. All these wolves are costing four. I don't, I want wolves that don't cost four. Isn't there another wolf in here that costs four? I think I remember that. But now I, I've been talking too much. Yeah, another wolf, a rare wolf, it costs four. So this wolf costs four. I want, Wick, I, like, Wicked Wolf is going to be better. We already have Wicked Wolf, and we already have um, Nightpack Ambusher. Why why do wolves have to cost four mana? Is there a rule that I didn't know about? It's like bears cost two, wolves cost four. Wolves are just four mana four fours. Is this thing a four mana four four? Ah, it's a three three. Come on, make that a four four. Bump it up. Let's go. Wolves are four, four mana four fours. There's a there's a good two mana wolf. Oh yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, not a big fan of this card. I I wish it had a different mana cost so it would be easier to put into a wolf tribal deck. But as is, I don't even know if we're putting it into wolf tribal. Uh, I guess I'll go D minus. I guess maybe we put it into wolf tribal, but uh, we won't give it the straight up L yet. All right, Flaxen Intruder, uh, G for a 1-2. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may sacrifice it if you do destroy target artifact or enchantment. So that's pretty tough to do. You know, like, your 1-2 your has to connect, and then you get to destroy an artifact or enchantment. So, you, like, you probably already have the 1-2 in play, and then your opponent's like, okay, well, now I'll play my artifact or enchantment. And, and, uh, and also, by the way, I don't have a way to stop this 1-2 from actually hitting me. So, like, they probably want to just, like, get rid of the 1-2 and then play the Artifact or Enchantment or, you know, have a, have a way to deal with it. It's just a 1-2. Um, so, that's not... So, like, not loving this here. So, we got Welcome Home. We have a 7-mana Sorcery. Let's just create three 2-2 two -two bears. It's not really worth 7-mana, honestly. This is... I'm giving this just an L for Limited. I don't think... We really need this card. I think if, if we want Cyborg, Artifact, or Enchantment Hate, I think we would much rather have something reliable like Reclamation Sage uh, than, than something like this. Uh, Garenbrig Carver. Three and a G for a 3-2. That's not so good. It has Shield's Might. One and a G instant. Target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Looks like just another limited card here. All right, how about Garenbrig Paladin? Five mana, four, four. 
that has adamant that it will enter the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it and garen brig paladin can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less all right so we're in the limited part of the set uh, of the color here so that's okay i mean not every card can be can be standard made for standard all right two mana two two human soldier whenever you cast a creature spell that has adventure it gets plus one plus one until end of turn it's not bad not bad still gonna go l here i think this is worse than the one that says draw a card but it's more playable i mean two mana two twos are you know pretty standard playable but that's not a good enough ability giant opportunity two and a green for a sorcery you may sacrifice two foods if you do create a seven seven green giant creature token otherwise create three food tokens um so of course like this this is kind of made to go with this thing i guess you create three foods to be able to bring this thing back but we're spending an entire card and three mana to make some foods. Or if we have a couple of foods, we make just a 7-7 seven, seven token. Tokens aren't very valuable with um, uh, with Teferi running around. You spend three mana, and you're like, all right, I got the 7-7 seven, seven token. And they're like, I'll spend three mana, and I'll bounce it, and I'll draw a card. And then you're like, ugh. Yeah, so it is a may. You get to decide. You can just make your, free to your food tokens for them to bounce the food tokens instead um so yeah just going with a another l here for giant opportunity i don't really see why we'd play this i mean are we thinking like against the red deck like a burn deck we want to spend three mana so that then we can spend six more mana to gain nine life total we could probably do something better the gilded goose G for an O2 flying creature bird. When Gilded Goose enters the battlefield, create a food token. You can pay one in a G and tap create a food token, or you can also pay uh, or just tap it and sack a food and add a mana of any color. Yeah, I really like me some Land of War Goose. Um, I think this card is this card's not as reliable as Land of War Elf. All right, so that's that's one thing. You can't just like tap this for mana every single turn like you can with Land War Elf. You are going to want to like uh, try to not use your Gilded Goose if you don't have to, kind of thing, because uh, you know you only get the one food. So if you if you uh, you know play this and then you have a two drop on two and you have a tap land, you maybe want to just like play your regular land and play your two drop and save your tap land, maybe um, kind of thing. But obviously the, the the best card that really synergizes well with Gilded Goose, of course, is Oko. Oko is is really the thing here, um, but yeah, this can block a healer's hawk. There you go. Um, yeah, I mean, Gilded Goose is. I think this is just an A. I think this is just a, a card that's going to see a lot of standard play in a lot of decks. I think. Uh, I think one thing that's underrated is the the pay to tap create a food token, where later on in the game, because you know, like games don't go perfectly to plan, and there's a lot of games that you just like don't have things to do and you just have mana and gilded goose can sit there and uh make a food token that you then sacrifice and gain three life and you know it can just kind of sit there and help you gain three life a turn that can help that can let you stabilize and and give you another couple draw steps to find your hydroid crisis or whatever um but yeah obviously this with oko is really where you're going to be uh giving people the bird I don't even know why I said that. All right, we have the Great Henge, um, uh, which is 7 GG Legendary Artifact. Uh, this spell costs uh, X less to cast, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. Um, you can tap it, add GG, you gain 2 life, and whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1-1 one -one counter on it and then draw a card wow this card is great this card is great oko is a blue green planeswalker that we'll talk about later on when we get to multicolor so yeah this card's just awesome so uh 
it may be a surprise, but there's a green card that works well with Cavalier Thorns. You play, ca you know, so if you have five mana to cast Cavalier, you get a six land off Cavalier. Um, Cavalier is a five power creature, so now Great Henge only costs four mana, so you're going to have your mana to be able to play it. Um, so, like, let's say you have that, so you pay four to play it. You can immediately tap it to add two and gain two life immediately. Even if you don't have anything to, to play, you can just immediately play it and gain two life. But then if you do, uh, you know, you get to start uh, playing creatures and drawing more cards, putting counters on your creatures. The more cards you draw means the more creatures you're going to have, which means the more defense you can play and the longer you can stay alive for Great Henge to gain more life, to gain to draw more cards. Works really well with Leafkin Druid, you know, being just GG there, tap, uh, play Leafkin Druid immediately. Uh, works perfectly there. Um you know, Leafkin Druid being a 1-4 is like a whole lot better blocker than an 0-3. Um, this card's just incredible. This card is just really, really good. Um, I, I don't know if y'all have heard of uh, Hydroid Crisis before, but Hydroid Crisis wants you to have a lot of mana. And this thing is just an artifact that, you know, you untap with it, untap with it, then you get two extra mana. So who knows? Maybe we'll be able to play Hydro Crisis in Standard. Maybe we'll play, like, Nissa also. You never know. Yeah. It's just, like, all those, like, green... Like, green is already, like, just really good. And this is just a card that makes all of the good green cards better. Like, that's, that's really about it. Makes all the good green cards better. Um, yeah, Nissa and Krasis, finally playable. Yeah, um, do Nissa's elementals get counters? No, because the, the Nissa, whenever they plus up on a land, that, that land is not entering the battlefield. The land is already on the battlefield, so no, that does not. Um, but this just helps ramp and just draws more cards. So you just draw more cards to find more, to hit more land drops, get more Hydro Crisis, find more Risenries, find more Cavalier Thorns. Oh, this is silly. Um, with your rock, you draw two cards. You have this in play, go ahead and play your rock. Put a counter on it, make your rock a 4-6, draw two. Play your next creature, draw two. Play your next creature, draw two. Pretty crazy kiora oh yeah love it with kiora absolutely kiora you get to uh untap this thing gain more life add more mana why not kiora wants really big creatures yeah just play with kiora that's that's pretty good that's pretty good oh yeah like those green decks so those those kind of green decks could struggle against aggro you could struggle stabilizing but this gain two life a turn you know every turn gaining two life like that that will stabilize very quickly. All right, so um, yeah, basically uh, this card's great. It is a legendary artifact that originally cost nine mana. It's not something that you want to like look at your opening hand and you have four lands and a Hydroid Crisis and two great, the Great Henge. That's not a good hand. You know, so this is a card that like makes a lot of your other cards better and really turns on the power of your deck but it's not really a card you may want to like you, you probably don't want to play four of this card kind of thing um i'm thinking that oh yeah yeah you animate this with karn make make this a nine nine yeah. Yeah. but yeah like this is this could definitely like this is going to see play we're going to be building around this card this card's pretty busted um it is still uh, an expensive legendary artifact. So are we going A, and, and A is a card that will see a lot of standard play in multiple decks, or be the defining card of a popular deck? I kind of feel like it. I think we can go A here. Maybe A- minus because of just its restriction of being legendary artifact and everything. I think this is the best of the legendary artifacts. I'm calling that. I'm calling this is the best of the legendary artifacts. So we'll go A. I think we gave other ones A- minuses and stuff. Let's just give it an A. That's good. Insati insatiable appetite. 1G instant. You may sack a food. If you do, target creature gets plus 5, plus 5 until end of turn. Otherwise, that creature gets plus 3, plus 3. 
You can chill over and limited appetite. Keeper of Fables. This is a good cat right here. Five mana, four, five cat. Whenever one or more non-human creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, draw a card. Drawing cards is nice. I don't know like when like green turned into the draw card color. Like why green is like the card advantage color. Green was the big big creature color. But now it's the big creature and card advantage. But it is. So uh Keeper of the Fables, I'm gonna give like a, a D just because it's a cat. Um this isn't really that strong for standard. Five mana is too much for this. Um but it's it's a cat, it's cool. I'm gonna give it a B instead of an L. Kenrith's transformation. One G for an enchantment aura. Enchant creature when Kenrith's transformation enters the battlefield, draw a card. Enchant creature loses all abilities and is a green elk creature with the base power and toughness three three. I don't think this is playable in standard. I think this is just an L. Um, there are, of course, like, you know, you're playing mono green. You want a removal spell. Oh, it does have ETB draw card. Okay. Okay. Never mind. We're kind of talking with ETB draw card. We're kind of talking. It's just an Oko activation. Um... Midnight, please watch the language. Um, but yeah, like you can, you can get rid of, yeah, like God Eternals, uh, get rid of Cavalier Thorns, you know, turn Cavalier Thorns, turn your rock, turn those things into three threes, uh, make them lose their abilities. Um, you know, like there, there are things you can do with that, but you're still, it's like, if you think about like Baffling End, like Baffling End like took the creature and then for two mana, and then if they kill the enchantment, then they get the three three. This just like lets them get the three three immediately. Like if you're if you're playing trying to be defensive at all, um, three threes kill people very quickly. Like that's that's not that great. Hey, what's up, Huday? Like three threes kill people really quickly. Yeah, you get to make Oko um, exchange it. That's for sure. Um, but yeah, the. This was definitely going to be an L until like the, oh yeah, they, we do get to draw a card. So it does make it a lot more tolerable. I like, that's a, that's a good statement there, Parappa. Um, <laughs> yeah, Sunlandic has it, Sunlandic has it perfect here too. It's a card that I wouldn't mind drawing in some situations, but I would never put into a deck. I agree completely. Like I'm never going to put that card in, into a deck, but there's like scenarios where, I wouldn't mind drawing it. So I'm getting a D minus. You want to use it for the pump ability? You want to put it on your own creature? Make your creature lose its abilities and just turn it into a 3-3? Three, three? And draw a card? It's like, what creature are we putting that on? What are we playing in green that we're doing that to? Yeah, for like a Nissa land, yeah. Then doesn't yeah, it won't add mana anymore, but your Nissa land's a six six now. No, I, I would rather have the Gilda Goose be able to keep adding like making food, I think. What's up, Naughty Ba? I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for the sub. Thanks for the support. Y'all are awesome. Yeah, Boreal Grazer. You put your extra land into play, then you draw a card, you make it a three-three, and you start beating down with a boreal grazer. That's a that's one. A boreal grazer, that's a real card that you could Ken Rith's transformation. I'm still never putting it into a into a deck, but that's that's a thing. That's a thing you could do. Yeah, rejuvenator rejuvenator if it was still in standard, but still I'm, we're just not doing it. But yeah. Alright, uh Love Struck Beast. Uh, so question is, are we going to be playing Grazer over Gilded Goose? If you are a uh, Field of the Dead deck and therefore having a, a like having lands in play is more valuable than having permanents that add mana, that you need like actual physical lands in play, 
and plenty of them, then a Boreal Grazer could be more useful than Gilded Goose. Lovestruck Beast, 2 and a G for a 5-5. Five five. Cannot attack, though, unless you control a 1-1 one one creature. However, you can Heart's Desire for a G to create a 1-1 one one white human creature token. I'm not very high on this card. I think I've seen a, a good amount of people liking this card. I I don't like this card very much. Like, I'm you know thinking about like my my mono green uh, stompy deck, and I'm not including this card in it. Am I doing something wrong here? Yeah, because you you can play Henge on turn four. I don't think that I want to put this card in my deck just because I can play Great Henge the next turn, if I happen to have one of my Great Henges. I do like it blocking. It blocks really well. I could I, I could definitely see me putting this in the sideboard against aggro decks just to have a, a good blocker against aggro. But I don't want to play this against like a, a normal opponent that's playing removal that they just they're like, oh, I'll just kill your one one and now you can't do anything with this. And now I'm playing like a green stompy deck, so it's not like I'm just putting a bunch of one ones in my deck. I don't think a 1-1 with a 1-1 counter would work. I think that would be counted as a 2-2. You think this would be red, really good in red-green aggro? I just don't think this, this card will be able to attack very much. Yeah, I think I could see the, I could see myself playing this in the sideboard against mono-red for a, a blocker kind of thing. Um, I could see that. I don't I'm I'm not big on this card. I'm going C. Fringe standard card used as filler for certain decks, like Corpse Knight. I think this is very Corpse Knight. C. Who knows? I could be wrong. You know, I'm we haven't played with the cards yet and, and things change, you know. Uh, situations change depending on the metagame also, depending on other popular cards, where then you, or now you start playing cards that, you know, to counteract those ones and so on. What's up, Yud? Review's going real good. Yeah, no Land War Elf. Now we have Gilded Goose that's an 0-2. So we don't have an extra 1-1 there. Good with three mana Chandra. All right. Zombo, you got me there. I like it with three mana Chandra. You got me there. So yeah, so you're talking about, okay, so okay, so with Gruul, so it's good with all the other three drops with Gruul because Gruul, you got, okay, so that's what you're talking about with it's good with Gruul. So we got three mana Chandra, we got Kranko, we got uh, Legion War Boss. So I think, so you, you're trying to make go with War Boss, Kranko, Chandra, but that's just all three drops. Do we need Love Struck Beast? Like, if we we're already got like those other cards are good. Do you really need this card? You got the if you're doing stuff with the other things. Like, why don't you just have two war bosses instead of a war boss and a beast or whatever? No, I don't think Chandra can buy back the adventure with the minus two. I'm pretty sure this counts as a creature in the graveyard. I'm pretty sure. Green white tokens. Green White Tokens isn't actually good, though, right? Like, everybody plays just, like, like there's Legion's End everywhere. Like, why would you want to make, why would you want to go wide with, like, 1-1 one, one tokens when there's Legion's End everywhere that just exiles all of them for two mana? Unless, like, people stop playing Legion's End. All right, am I wrong there? Is Green White, to I feel like Green White Tokens isn't a deck. Oh well. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go C here for Love Struck Beast. But we'll see. I I I mean I could be wrong. Like this is you know like sometimes you know like uh like there's cards that I feel like I I could be underrating. There's some cards I feel like I'm overrating. Uh, you know like that's you know if you're do, if you kind of go through the cards, I'm sure you would think the same thing. And th this is a card that I could see seeing play but for all the scenarios that i can think of i 
don't really want it that much, basically. Um, yeah. So, could be wrong. Uh, last last review, I was pretty down on shifting ceratops. Uh, I was like, I don't like, I don't think shifting ceratops is that good. And then it turned out Simic Flash was a deck. And then suddenly shifting ceratops is amazing because everybody's playing all these counter spells. And I I didn't think anybody would be playing counter spells because of Teferi. So I'm like, why why do we need the shifting ceratops? So you know, like we'll see. Uh, all right, we got Mara Leaf Rider. Uh, one in a G for a three one sack of food target creature. Blocks Mara Leaf Rider this turn if able. It's a nice fox. Elf Knights are not as cool as foxes, which is just like a 3 1 fox. You can get rid of this rider. More fox. So uh, let's go L. Uh, no, Deuterino, have not. Oakham Adversary, 3 and a G for a 2-3. This spell costs 2 less to cast if your opponent controls a green permanent. It has Death Touch, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. So let's 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 assume we're kind of playing this against green decks. You know, let's let's give this card a little bump. So we got a 2 mana, 2-3 two, Death Touch. When it deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Now, if you're on the play... You know, they need to have like turn one Gilded Goose. You know, it's not, it's going to be two mana later on, kind of, maybe not immediately on turn two. Um, the problem, like, so Death Touch Creature, you want to be able to block with it, right? Like, you want to block and uh, trade with like their bigger creature, right? So, yeah, and like the Mono Green Mirror or something. You want to, that's what you want to do with it. Um, blocking Cavalier Thorns isn't always spectacular because cavalier thorns get something cool back uh but like something you want to block in a mono green mirror you definitely want to block the questing beast uh questing beast can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less this creature has power two okay power two is power two power two or less Let's see do a little math here carry the one uh, yes, uh, two is two or less. So my adversary doesn't get to block the best card in the format. And like the card in the format that I really want to block that I'm playing my like anti-green card for. Hmm. That's a tough one, pal. That's a tough one. So I'm not too high on this Oak Oakham adversary. Uh, got to so we, we can't block very well with the card we can't block questing b so we've got to be aggressive then so you need to play this card and really want to be aggressive with it which the third clause of the card it deals combat damage to a player draw a card so the third clause does make you want to be aggressive with the card also um are we really putting a a two three death touch that we're like needing to attack with a bunch into our deck is that like the best we got going for us um with yeah irrelevant creature types probably not probably not um so yeah let's uh we'll go with a i won't give it an l i suppose it does say draw cards and stuff we'll go d minus can we like put it in our deck and fight stuff with it can we play it can we play it in gruel with Three mana uh, Domri. Maybe you play this on two, three man, play three mana Domri and fight stuff. And then they play Questing Beast and attack you and hit you for four and kill your Domri because you can't block with this thing. Hmm. This is a tough one. <laughs> if it could, if it could, if it could trade with Questing Beast, I'd be a lot more interested in it, but it can't. I'm not very interested in it. All right, so D minus. All right, once and future. There's the king there. We have three and a G for an instant. Return target card from your graveyard to your hand. Put up to one other target card from your graveyard. 
on top of your library and exile once and future. And then uh, it has adamant if you spend three green mana, you can just put both cards into your hand. So this is better and worse than find. Like find, half a find finality is two green mana and you can put two, any two creatures from your graveyard to your hand. This costs twice as much. And if you spend three green mana for it, so if you're a very heavy green deck, you can put any two spells you want. So that does help you if you're playing like a green black deck and you go grab like Legion's End and um, I don't know, whatever other removal spell. You just grab some, you, know, you can grab some removal spells. But still, we're talking four mana. And in a, in a green deck that's very heavy green, uh, oh yeah, Planeswalkers. Yeah, you get back Nissa. There you go. You can get back Nissa with this. There you go. That's good. Yeah, like Planeswalkers. That Planeswalkers are good to get back. I was thinking like, what are we getting back? So like, yeah, we get Vivian back. So like Vivian, Nissa, that kind of stuff. I don't think it's worth a four mana. But yeah, Planeswalkers. That that's where it's at. I was thinking like removal spells. Um, but yeah, Planeswalkers. That's that's where we're at. But I think I think for the most part for green, you probably want to just play find. Uh, you know, get back your Cavalier Thorns and your Risen Reef and your Hydroid Crisis, and oh well, you don't get to get back, um, and you know, get back your Questing Beast, but oh well, you don't get to get back Nissa, but it costs two and not four. I think if this was like three mana, we would kind of be talking at four. I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't know if we're, I don't know if we're in there. You can get back the Great Henge. I don't, I don't think the instant ma part of it matters too much. Um, yeah. All right, once upon a time, 1G instant. If this spell is your first spell, you've cast this game. You may cast it without paying its mana cost. Look at the top five cards of your library you may reveal a creature or land card from among them and put it into your hand put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order i guess one last thing with this yeah i guess this could work if you're playing a kefnet tamio control deck and you want to put a card back on top for kefnet and you've like filled your graveyard with tamio and stuff maybe you want to do that there but still i mean you could just play play just just play drawn from dreams right that's like just not nearly as um situational anyway this card's kind of confusing to me once upon a time confusing as in i don't know how to it's kind of a like without playing the card and just like for like a, a day one deck I don't know exactly how to build the mana base, exactly how many lands to play, play this card. Do we play all, is it just like automatic, always play all four, um, you know, play all four, no questions asked, uh, play one or two less lands. Like what? I, I don't know. Um, the thing is, is like, what is your, okay, a few things about it. Yeah, so obviously y'all uh, know. I think I think y'all understand the upside of the card. I think kind of everybody understands like the upside of this card here. Once upon a time, I don't think that that's something I really need to sell y'all on. I think that that people are maybe not understanding the downside of the card. I think that's what. Um, uh, okay, Frank Carson has an article on it over there at at uh, Channel Fireball. Okay, cool. I'll have to check that one out. Um. The downside, so like, let's let's say your hand is like, okay, it screws up mulligan decisions. You may like have your hand and your hand is four lands and whatever spell and two once upon a times. And so you're like, okay, I'm going to keep this hand because like, I, all right, I got my four lands. I got some once upon a times. Maybe your once upon a times don't actually hit things. like, And so maybe your hand is actually nothing, you know, it's a, it's a low percentage shot. I mean, you get a look at five cards, but. I'm just saying it, it kind of messes with your mulligan decision. Um, having multiples isn't necessarily that great. You do have to like have your like two extra mana to, to cast it, you know, kind of thing. Um, you know, think about, uh, 
the card from I guess War of the Spark, the 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 two mana look at the top three, gain three life, you know, put a permanent card where you know where it could grab planeswalkers and um and bola citadel and that kind of stuff. Like taking like spending your time early on in the game, like spending turn two, turn three, and spending two mana to cast that card was definitely a downside. Um like because you are just being slow of just like of casting that it it did gain three life so it helped you stabilize this gets to look another two cards deeper but only grabs creatures and lands doesn't grab other permanents doesn't grab like the great henge or nissa or things like that um but then also you don't get to gain two life now obviously i like i'm i'm trying to say like you know i'm trying to talk about how this card's not perfect for you um (laughs) <laughs> uh, so like basically like if it's it's kind of like a ley line where if it's like my first card that i draw i i'm sad kind of thing it's like i didn't really want to draw this um i'd rather i want to curve out you know i want to be playing my stuff and curving out i don't want to be drawing once upon a time so like drawing this on turn two turn three turn four this is not a that's not a card you want to be drawing there so basically it's it's really good in your opener as a one of the second one in your opener is not nearly as good, but it's really good in your opener as a one of. It's it's perfect. It's per basically close to perfect, except for it does kind of mess up your mulligan decisions a little bit because you don't know exactly what you're keeping, kind of thing. Um, but it's not a great card to draw. Uh, you know, turn two, turn three, turn four. Like after you've already cast a spell. Um, it's not a great card to have multiples of immediately. Um, and uh. And that's kind of the thing. It's it's a good card to draw in the late game whenever you have extra mana, of course. It works perfectly with in the late game with the Great Henge after you already have the Great Henge in play. And then, boom, pay two. Uh, just cast this thing. It works really well there. Those two synergize uh, together at that point. Go find more creatures. Creatures draw more cards because the Great Henge. That kind of thing. But, yeah. it's So, it's it's really good. Um, but yeah, the, the tempo part, but yeah, that's, that's, that's basically what I'm saying is taking, taking turns off to actually cast this card. If you already cast another one, like, you know, like you played like a Gilda goose or whatever, then you draw it. Or if you had multiple of these, you'd really don't want to take, take time off casting this in the mid game. It's basically, it's a, it's a turn. It's your zero mana play early, which is awesome. It's late game. It's awesome. It's the, the mid game where you're trying to stabilize, and your opponents, you know, like killing your creatures or uh, you know attacking you with a bunch of stuff um, against aggro decks. That's where it's not great. Um, so it's not perfect. The instant speed in a green deck filled with creatures isn't really valuable because you're not really holding up your mana for other stuff, um, unless you're playing something like. You know, obviously, if we're playing like a flash deck, like where you can go find Frilled Mystic and uh, Nightpack Ambusher, obviously, then your you know your instant speed is more valuable. Uh, yeah, it's, it's so it's awesome there in Simic Flash, of course. Um, so basically, it's it's an A. I'm not I'm not trying to say it's not an A. It's just is it A plus? I'm not sure. I'm willing to go A plus, basically. I don't know. It's close. It's close to A+. I'm not sure. Like, I'll give you a little spoiler. I'm give, Like, Questing Beast is going to be an A+. I don't know if um, if I want to go A+, once upon a time, also. I, th- I think I think it's an... I, I'm going to go with an A, not A+. I think it may be a little clunkier than, than people realize. I'm just kind of giving a little warning. That's all. That's all I'm saying. We'll see. <laughs> A's a fair grade, but I'm adding A plus because I ordered four of them. Yeah, no, it's 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 really good. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, that's. I think, I think that. Uh, it it may look a little worse 
right away. Like maybe people build decks a little incorrectly with this card because it's really difficult to build with this card. I talked about how I, I'm not even sure exactly what I want to do. I'm not even sure what I want to do with this card. Besides, Simic Flash is just super obvious. But besides that, I don't I don't really know exactly what I want to do. I'm going to have to check out that Frank Carson's article and stuff. But that's a that's a tricky one. All right, Out Muscle. Um, three and a G, Sorcery. Uh, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature you control. Then it fights target creature you don't control. If at least three green mana was spent to cast a spell, that creature you control gains indestructible. We're not playing four mana fight spells around here. We're not doing it. Uh, Questing Beast. So that's an L. All right, so I already just said I'm giving Questing Beast an A+. This is the best card in the set, in my opinion. Four mana, four, four. Legendary creature, beast, vigilant. Vigilance, death touch, haste. Can't be blocked by creatures, power two or less. Combat damage that would be dealt by creatures you control can't be prevented. And whenever it deals combat damage to an opponent, it deals that much damage to target Planeswalker that player controls. So think about uh, Shifting Ceratops. We were talking about that earlier. How the haste part of, of Shifting Ceratops was just a, a valuable card to take out Planeswalkers. That people played that in, in uh, sideboards even for Simic Flash, but then also for Planeswalker decks to fight Planeswalkers. This has that haste for a mana cheaper, and it has vigilance, and it doesn't get chump blocked by little things, and you get to just keep the pressure on the opponent, deal damage to them. They got Othakaya, forget that. You don't have to attack into Othakaya. No, keep the damage going on them and still deal the damage to the Planeswalker. Um, it has Death Touch, so it it never, or like it it always trades up even. Is the death touch. I think the the all right, so the downside of this card is it's legendary, so you only have one in play. So I think that that's gonna have people play less than four in their deck, because they'll see, okay, it's legendary, I'm gonna play less than four because I can't have two in play. But this card, your opponents are gonna try to be killing it immediately. They're gonna have to. It's attacking for four immediately. With hate, it has haste. It's gonna like it's gonna trade off all the time. Like they're gonna have to use their removal on it. Uh, they they can't just chump block it. It's gonna trade up with death touch, so it's gonna trade for, with removal spells creatures. You're gonna just be able to play your next one. Yeah, I think like the thing about this card right away that uh, because the legendary people won't yeah people may not play four but. Um, I, I did go ahead and check before the stream because I wanted just to make sure. But they, that I checked the rule book, and you are actually you are allowed to play Questing Beast as a four of. They allow you to play four of this card. How ridiculous is that? They let you play four of those. That card's unreal. You get four of them in your deck. Just put them in. Just don't don't worry about that. It's legendary. You get four. That's four slots. All right, you can worry about other stuff. That card is great. I'm going A plus, and we're moving on. Return of the Wild Speaker, four energy, instant. Choose one. Draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures you control. Um, and uh, or yeah, because choose one. So or non-human creatures you control get plus three plus three until turn. All right. So if you are playing. Like a Selesnya Tokens deck, like we we're talking about, or playing something. Um, uh, uh, also, this makes Vivian Arcbow Ranger. Vivian Arcbow Ranger is the most underrated card in M20. And now this with Vivian Arcbow Ranger, just also insane. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, Return of the Wild Speaker. So, yeah, if you're going really wide, you can go five mana instant. Uh, give all your creatures plus three, plus three kind of thing. <laughs> Spends 10 minutes on jank card a minute for questing beast. Well, that's like we're doing our bre brewer set review. You know, like we're talking about how we can brew around different cards. So yeah, we got to talk about jank cards for a while, but like, this is just obvious. Just, just play, put, just put these in your deck. The card's amazing. Yeah. So plus three, plus three with all your creatures is no joke. And it's instant speed. You can, you can see how your opponent blocks 
And if they block in such a way where, like, plus three, plus three just kills them, you can do that. Um, so that's, that's no, yeah, that is no joke. And then, or, you know, you can draw, like, if you play this with Cavalier Thorns, <laughs> just going to keep on saying that card because it's so good. But, yeah, you know, Cavalier Thorns uh, for five because it helps you ramp. You got your extra mana. You just play this. You draw five cards. Um, yeah. But I don't expect this to see very much play, but I think I think that's kind of like how uh, it could see play is if you're playing like a, a Selesnya type token deck where you want this. Um, are you playing this instead of playing like Tristani? That's just like a creature that, that does a lot of good stuff. Like probably not, to be honest. Um, because, you know, it's, it's like how many five drops are we really playing? I'm just saying this, this could surprise people. You, you can get some wins with it, but probably shouldn't be playing it too much. I'm going D minus. Maybe D. It's not, it's not bad. We'll go D. Isn't this card great in mono green stompy? Oh, not really, because it costs five. Like, I'd rather just play Nissa. That's a thing. It's like Nissa's a card. Like, I, like I want Nissa like at the top of my curve of mono green stompy. You know, like I want four questing beast, four Vivian Arcbow Ranger, four Nissa. Like that's like my top of my curve. Uh, Return to Nature, one G instant. Uh, this is just this is a reprint. This is in standard already. I think I'm pretty sure it's in standard. If not, it's rotating out. But destroy an artifact or an enchantment or exile a card from a graveyard. Uh, could be a little more useful now with these uh, big legendary artifacts. You know, maybe you need to get rid of a Great Henge, um, something like that. Maybe you exile some card from a graveyard. There's there's black cards that deal with cards in graveyards. It's a very, very fringe sideboard card, um, but it's playable in the sideboard. Playable-ish. Um, it was kind of playable before the last couple of sets that gave us just a a lot of good cards kind of thing but maybe a d i guess a fringe sideboard card like a thought distortion is a fringe sideboard card that's, that's kind of like what this is we'll go d um rose thorn acolyte two and a g for a two three that you can tap add one mana of any color or so you know we got a uh we got paradise druid costs one more mana and is a 2-3. doesn't have, like, the Hexproof right away. You know, give me Paradise Druid all day. But then we also have Seasonal Ritual. Uh, for a single green mana, you can uh, add one mana of any color. So you can uh, fix your mana there. Um, filter your mana, I guess, is a better term there. You can filter your mana to be a mana of a different color. I don't think that's really worth it to have the Rose Thorn Acolyte C play. I'm going with an L here. We also have the the black green, I don't know, scorpion or whatever that thing is, the nightmare thing. It's like the same card, but also has death touch and lifelink. <laughs> Batamorphos. <laughs> All right, uh, Rose Thorn Halbred G equipment. Whenever it enters the battlefield, attach it to target non-human creature you control. The equipped creature gets plus two, plus one. So, you know, like, we're going through that part. You're like, all right, one one mana, give give a creature you control plus two, plus one. All right, and then it's also equipment, so you can put it on other things. Equip five. Ugh. Ugh. All right, we're never putting it on anything else ever again. It's never getting equipped anywhere else. <laughs> yeah, equip 250. It's like, ugh. L. Might as well just be an enchantment. Spore Cap Spider, 2G for a 1-5 reach. Look at all the little mushrooms on the spider. All the mushrooms on the spider. I went out to, uh, to, I went outside today with the dogs, and right whenever I opened the door, Harvey, uh, my other dog, not puppy, but Harvey, walks out the door, and like this is like Harvey's head, 
and like right when she's walking out the door from like the from the top of the door a big spider just went straight down right on the top of harvey's head right between her ears and she was just perfectly you know she just per- never knew it didn't never realized it uh, for a couple of minutes there and just you know like you know walked around and was just you know just excited to be outside and like wanted me to pet her and stuff and there's just like the spider on her head like right on the like right right on the top of her head um yeah but you know got the spider went away though got the spider off and yeah but spider never bit harvey or anything like that but i was just like ah because you know i just open the door and the dogs run out first and i'm about to go down and the spiders falls right in front of me and right on top of harvey all right um that was just a weird thing that happened today uh sir Farron, the hedge hammer it's gg for a 2-2 whenever sir Farron, the hedge hammer attacks another target attacking creature gets plus x plus x until end of turn where x is sir Farron's power Aren't all the other Sir cards, aren't they all five mana? And now this one is just two mana? Isn't that, aren't they all just like five mana? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think this, the spider's bite, but yeah. Like why, I don't like whenever they do that with the cycles, when they all like cost like the same amount and they're all like kind of the same and then they're just only like, boom, this one's constructed playable. I know the... The black one and the red one were five mana. I'm pretty sure they were all five mana. The blue one's not five? Okay. Black and the red, okay. Uh, were. But anyway. Um, oh, no, no, no. So the blue one, the UUUX, that's, that's, that's a different cycle. That's a different cycle than this, isn't it? That's that's a different cycle. That's that's the rare cycle. The that's the Yorvo cycle. That's not a sir. That's not part of the sir cycle. Anyway, um Anyway, talk about this card. This card's definitely playable. So, unlike the the five drops that I don't really like cuz they're five drops, this is just a two drop. Um this this I think you can play in the Stompy decks. I think this works really well with Vivian Arc Bow Ranger. Um, you know, like where for four, you know, play your four mana planeswalker, pump this up, turn this into a four, four, and then attack. And you give another creature you control plus four, plus four. I think that's awesome. I think this is a, is a good two drop. I think this, so this competes with, um, the bark hide troll from last set. That's kind of like where we're competing here. Um, you're probably not playing all four of this card cause it's legendary. So maybe, you know, you play like four bark hide trolls and then like two more of these just to play like an extra two uh stompy two drops kind of thing yeah this this does work really well with uh you know playing you know curving this out into questing beast where you give your you know make your questing beast a six six you know it's like why not it's a six six they, they don't get to jump block but yeah I, I like putting counters on this thing with vivian and making it bigger so it doesn't die in combat as easily as well. So I, I think this is um, uh, <laughs> can't like this card because the art does not look like Nathan Fillion. I mean, I know Nathan Fillion. I I liked the the one show that he was on Castle. Like that's that's the that's Nathan's the cat the character in Castle, right? That's the only thing I've seen Nathan on. I've actually I know he was in uh firefly and everybody liked firefly but i've actually never seen firefly i think that's the same one um <clears throat> anyway i like this card definitely playable uh i'll be putting it in green stompy but it's not it's not uh it's not kind of everywhere that's that's kind of about the only place to play it and it's probably not even a four of there so i'm gonna go with a c plus We'll keep this going here. Tall is a beanstalk. 3G enchantment. Uh, yeah, enchant creature. Gets plus three, plus three. Has reach and is a giant in addition to its other types. This is just a limited card. Or I, it's probably not even a limited card. It's just we're giving it a limited rating. Trail of Crumbs. 1G one G, one G enchantment. 
Uh, whenever it enters the battlefield, create a food token. Whenever you sacrifice a food, you may pay one. If you do, look at the top two cards of your library. You may reveal a permanent card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. All right, so we're, we're spending two mana for a food token. And then uh, if we ever, whenever we sacrifice food tokens, and it doesn't say how you sacrifice food tokens. So you can sacrifice them for any uh, scenario. You know, like whether you are paying the, the two to sacrifice it the normal way, if you are sacrificing them to feasting troll kin. Hmm, that was close. Feasting troll king. Whether you're doing that, whether you are sacrificing them to Bantu. I don't know. However you want to sacrifice a food token. Whenever you do that, then you can pay one, look at the top two cards of your library, put a permanent into your hand. Are we um, are we really doing... So, like, that's, like, kind of cool. You know, we get to, like, put some extra permanents in our hands every time we sack a food token. Are we really doing that? I don't know. Like, are we just... Uh, are we playing, like... Like, is this something you want to do? Do you want to play Gilded Goose on turn one? Um... Oko on turn two, make a make a food. This on turn three, uh, sack a food to Gilded a goose to add mana, and then with your mana you you pay the one here, and you get to reveal a permanent card from a you know took, look at the top two, put a permanent card into your hand. So basically, with those with those in play, you have Oko make a food, Gilded a goose sacks the food with that mana you use for this and then so you look at the top two cards of your library put a permanent into your hand and you just keep on doing is that something that we want to do can we just be doing like better things than that yeah it doesn't it seems like we could probably be doing better things than that right so i'm gonna just go limited I tr I'm, I'm trying. I'm just going to go with the yell, though. It doesn't say whenever you sack a food token, sacking is the activation cost. It it does say whenever you sacrifice a food. That's that's literally what it says. When Whenever you sacrifice a food. So that's that would count with Gilded Goose. When Gilded Goose sacks a food to add mana, this triggers. All right, we'll go, maybe I'll just, all right, fine, we'll go D minus instead of the limited rating for something that you could see. All right, to entail tree, to unveil tree folk, 5G for a 6-5, that's not constructed playable. Let's see what our Oaken Boon is. Oaken Boon is a 3G sorcery adventure. Put two 1-1 counters on target creature. At least you can put counters on your opponent's creature. That's kind of cool. Doesn't have to be a creature you control. L. Awesome art though, especially the the alternate art. It's really cool. Wicked Wolf. Two GG. But the mana is not in your pool to pay the trigger. Yeah, it is. Yeah, the, the mana is in your pool. The mana go the mana goes in your pool instantly. There's no there's no response. You don't respond to tapping a a gilded goose for mana and then respond to the mana being in your mana pool the mana is in your mana pool you can use that mana for this anyway wicked wolf 2gg for a 3-3 whenever it enters the battlefield it fights up to one target creature you control um so you know we got another wolf here it's a it's a four mana 3-3 three, three that that fights uh, it doesn't have flash um you know so it's it's basically like Tulsimer, except for you only get the 3-3 three, three wolf that fights. So it costs one less than Tulsimer, but you just get that. But then you can also sacrifice a food to put a counter on Wicked Wolf and give it indestructible and tap it. Um, so if you got extra food, if you're playing Oko, you know, that can be kind of nice. This definitely looks a lot worse than Tulsimer, though, overall. Like Tulsimer gains the three life and fights and makes the other body. So it's like... You know, we have to be playing this also. Um, of course, if you have Tulsimer in play and you have a food in play, then you can, uh, then whenever you play Wicked Wolf, 
you know, you can you can make your Wicked Wolf indestructible, but then you also get to fight two things because it fights for the Wicked Wolf trigger and it will also fight for the Tulsimar trigger. So you can have it double fight as a 4-4. Four, four. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, I think this is basically playable with Tulsimar and nowhere else. Basically. I guess if you have a lot of foods, maybe. I mean, yeah... It, Yes, if you have a lot of foods, not not maybe. Yes, but from what we've seen here, making foods is not actually not that easy. I mean, really, it's Oko. Oko is like the only good card to make food tokens. So it's like, and Gilded Goose, of course, but that's pretty slow. So you know, it's not it's not unplayable. So fringe standard card used as filler for certain decks. Perfect. That's that's what this is. So C, good old C. All right, Wildborn Preserver, 1G, 2-2, two, two, Flash, Reach. Um, when another human, non-human creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay X. When you do, put X 1-1 one, one counters on a Wildborn Preserver. You like, you like Witch's Oven as a food maker? I guess, to be honest, I mean, I've looked at the, the card cards quite a bit and i think i've just kind of always overlooked witches oven i don't because i don't know actually what that card does we'll get to that later so maybe i'll see with that but maybe i guess maybe i've just overlooked that card in the artifacts all right so we see uh what card is oko oko is a blue green planeswalker they actually wait we're about to get to oko is blue green planeswalker we're like really close to artifacts what is this witches oven One artifact, tap, sack a creature, create a food. All right, I'm not that inter interested anymore. Not in a deck that's playing. I mean, I could see that in a different deck, but not in a deck that we're playing Wicked Wolf. I don't think I'm that interested in it. <clears throat> I know, this should be a fox. I agree, this should be a fox. shouldn't be an elf archer. Foxes are cooler than elf archers. Um, but anyway... Uh, so somebody said A, somebody said B, somebody said B+. This, this card's really good. Um, it's another two-drop to play in Green Stompy, to play in Simic Flash, absolutely. Just to play in green creature decks. Play your in your Vivian Arcbo deck. Play in your uh, just your, your Vivian Champion of Wilds deck. Um, you can do that there. Just uh, play in like like a deck like with that kind of stuff, with you know, with Nightpack Ambusher and things like that, but it's just a good creature. Like a two mana two two reach, is that spectacular? No. If it just said two mana two two flash reach, are we playing the card? Probably not. Like may like maybe in like the flash deck, but we're probably not going to play it that much. But this clause here is awesome. I love it. Whenever another non human creature you control enters the battle or whatever enters the battlefield under your control. Then you can pay X and then put X one one counters on this wild born preserver. I think that's a really really good uh, ability to have. Um, in like in mid and late game scenarios, you know, like later, you know, later on turn when we're talking turn four, turn five, turn six, and so on. It's very easy to have extra mana and one and two things don't always work out perfectly. You don't just perfectly curve out all the time. And so it's really easy to have extra mana. And if, if you just have like a, a very efficient mana sink that you can just use whatever mana you want. It's not, it's like, um, it's like a, a non-threatening mana sink here. Do you want to put your mana into it? You can. Do you not want to? You don't need to. Um, that kind of thing. And you can just, if you just like uh, play a three mana card on turn with, when you have five mana, you just spend that extra two. And now suddenly this preserver is a four, four, a four, four is huge. You know, that's, that's a good creature. Uh, you know, next turn, you know, you have an extra two mana whenever you play your creature. Now suddenly this thing's a six six. You know, it's it's that kind of thing that's like it's a two drop. The your opponent's gonna have to be like, okay, I gotta kill that. And you know, that's what you want. You want all of your cards to be, okay, I gotta kill that. You know, and so like this is just another card with that that only just requires the two mana um down payment. You know, it's only the two mana investment in this Wildborn Preserver where if you have the ability to, you can, and, uh, you know, if you have the ability to with extra mana, you can just put extra counters on this card and grow it. 
getting large green creatures we know is valuable because of like Vivian Arcbow Ranger. You know, put counters on stuff, give them trample. You know, if, if suddenly, you know, you were putting extra counters on this and it was like a 5-5 five five, and then you play an Arcbow Ranger and now it's a 7-7 seven seven Trampler. I mean, that's game. So, yeah, this card is just awesome. Love this card. Um, I'm, Yeah, I think this is a very, very strong card. I'm giving it an A. I think this can just go in a lot of different decks. I think it can be everywhere. Um, there's not really too much of a downside here. And you can even just, like, surprise block stuff. It's an A. Yes. Every, uh, yes. There's going to be... Uh, this goes up on YouTube. Six different videos. The first four videos are already up on YouTube right now. Um, and we're doing video number five here. Wildwood Tracker is a one mana 1-1. One, one. Elf Warrior. We need more foxes. Less, less elves. More foxes. Anyway, whenever... Wild Wolf Tracker attacks or blocks. If you control another non-human creature, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. So for the most part, this can be like a one mana 2-2 two, two, as long as you have another creature. Um, one mana 2-2 two, two is, is fine. You know, it's not like anything to ride home about, honestly, in standard these days. Uh, think about, um, yeah, no, you're not playing this over Pelt Collector. Pelt Collector is going to be a lot better than this. Think about like Kumena Speaker. Kumena Speaker was a one mana one one that gets plus one plus one if you control an island. So it's like a it's a two two in a blue green deck. You know nobody's putting that in a blue green deck. Um, besides specifically Merfolk, obviously, but like that's what I'm saying. Like you don't even really think about it. like so one mana two two is is fine. But yeah, we're we're playing Pelt Collectors um, and everything like that. If we're like really aggressive mono green. And we want four Pelt Collector and we want four of this card. And we don't, you know, maybe we don't really want Gilded Goose. Like maybe, maybe you just want, you know, like you want eight one drops and aggressive mono green with Pelt Collector in this card. Okay. You know, we, we can, we can do it. You know, it, you can play it. That's, that's, I think like the one spot it could be basically. That's, that's uh, the one spot I think it could be. So I think that's a, uh, Probably maybe a, a D, a card that you'll rarely see play in standard. Um, maybe a little bit better because I think mono green could be kind of decent. I mean, I think I think that could be okay for, and even for like like best of one, like best of one mono green. Maybe, maybe you play this as like, you know, the extra one drops. There could be a better one drop in standard also though, besides um, uh, whatever it's called um that card that we were just talking about <sighs> whatever it was called maybe there's another one drop that's better uh but anyway i can't even think anymore all right wolf's quarry 4gg pelt collector yeah there you go maybe there's another one that like you go pelt collector plus a different this other one drop and you don't even play wildwood tracker but it's the the second best one that i can think of off the top of my head but yeah it's definitely pelt collector is definitely better and then this would be number two. I don't know if there's a, another, like a, a second, a separate a green one drop that I can think of. All right, so Wolf's Quarry, four GG, create three one one green, four creature tokens with whenever this creature dies, create a food token. I guess that's good and limited question mark for six mana. That's not a card we're playing in Constructed. So I am giving this an L. All right. Uh, X is X is life, or sorry, so sorry, sorry, sorry. I meant to say mana. X is mana on Wildborn Preserver. Yeah, when it says you can pay X, it's not X. It would have to say X life. That X is mana. So it's just you just pay extra mana into this. All right, and finally, uh, Yorvo. Lord of Garenbrig. That's probably how you say that. Who knows? GGG for a zero zero. Well, there. Why are we? Okay. Why are we playing three mana to play a zero zero? Zero zero will just die when it enters. That's not a good deal. I guess there's more text on the card. We should probably read that. Yorvo enters the battlefield with four one one counters on it. Okay, never mind. So Yorvo is a four four. So three mana four four. Whenever another green creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1-1 counter on Yorvo. 
then if that creature's power is still greater than your bow's power, you can put an additional 1-1 counter on your bow. All right, so let's kind of compare this card to Steel Leaf Champion. Um, if uh, Steel, you know, Steel Leaf Champion was three mana, five four, not legendary, and also uh, couldn't be blocked by creatures power two or less. So you know, like was pretty awesome. I think Yorvo is pretty similar, but not maybe not quite as good, but also maybe better at times. Um, in longer games, like where there's board stalls, you'd rather have Yorvo. Now, Yorvo's legendary, so we're not playing as many, but I'm definitely playing this in the mono green Stompy deck. Um, I don't think Steel Leaf is miles better than this because, like, let's say you, you play this and then you play a, another creature, you know, then it turns into a 5 5. You play another creature, it's a 6 6. Now, this does get chump blocked very easily. I know that's what, that's what you're saying. They don't get to chump block Steel Leaf, but you can chump block this thing. Well, when you're playing this in Mono Green Stompy, you are absolutely playing four Vivian Arcbow Ranger because that card is awesome. And so this with Arcbow Ranger can just continue to make it bigger and give it trample. So yes, Steel Leaf, Steel Leaf Champion's a better card. I am I absolutely not saying this is better than Steel Leaf. Steel Leaf's better. However, we don't have Steel Leaf anymore, and we have a hole in the three mana slot. There's not very like that great of three drops for, for Green Stompy, and I think Yorvo uh, fits the bill. So, um, so yeah, we're going to play some Yorvos. Are we playing four because it's legendary? Maybe not. Maybe like three, maybe two. Probably three to start with. So a three of in a popular standard deck. Um, sounds like that's kind of like a B, a Voracious Hydra kind of level. Maybe a little less, because it's really only one deck it can possibly go in. So let's go B minus. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see what our top cards here for green were. This one got B minus. Let's see. Wild Porn Preserver was an A. I gave... Questing Beast, an A+. Plus. Once Upon a Time was an A. Gilded Goose, A. Great Henge, A. So those are our top five. As far as order, we're going Questing Beast, 1. Um, I think we'll go Once Upon a Time, 2. And then... I'm not sure with Gilded Goose or Wildborn Preserver. I'm going to go Great Henge is going to be number five. And then, so three and four are Gilded Goose, Wildborn Preserver. Which which one do y'all think is better? Um, let's do a quick poll. You can have 60 seconds. Either type Bird for Gilded Goose or Fox for Wildborn Preserver. So either type bird or fox. Which one is better? But while y'all decide that for a third and fourth slot, if you're watching this on YouTube, hope you've been enjoying this uh, set review. Uh, this knocks down uh, green. So we have covered all five colors. Now we're going to do one more video with multicolor artifacts and uh, lands all together for the last video. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons over there. And also, of course, leave some comments. Let me know what you, what you think uh, about these cards. Let me know what you think about, like, Once Upon a Time, how, how we were talking about and, and, you know, the discussion. You know, feel free to join the discussion with these different cards. Um, but, uh, yeah, there we go. Make sure, hope you check out all the other colors as well. And that's it here for green. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you for the next video, which will be multicolor and artifacts and stuff. So see y'all there in a minute.